Welcome back to 12 Days of Christmas on Yoga with Bree. This is going to be a very slow and low evening yoga practice that you can do to wind down at the end of the day. This is going to be very gentle and I will recommend if you have a pillow to grab a pillow and you might even want to keep a water bottle or a cup of hot tea nearby and perhaps light a candle to make it extra cozy. Without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start this practice in the middle of the mat in a child's pose. So go ahead and come down to the knees, slide the hands out long across the mat. And we'll take a few breaths, just getting settled into your child's pose, feeling the release of the weight of the body to the support of the floor. Allow the full weight of your head to rest heavy on the ground and allow the full weight of the hips to rest heavy on the heels. And then as you take your next few rounds of breath, really expand the low and mid back. So you're sending breath down all the way, all the way into the bottom of the lungs. And every time you exhale, empty completely. Good, we'll do one more breath here in that child's pose, full deep inhale through the nose. And then slow, steady exhale through the nose. Good, now pressing into the hands, rise up to a tabletop position. We'll start to warm up the spine with cat-cow. So you can separate the feet, inhale to arch your spine. And then as you exhale, curl the tailbone under and around the back. Again, as you inhale, arch the back, lift the chin, lift the chest. And then as you exhale, curl the tailbone under and round the back. One more like that. Inhale, arch the back, lift the chin. Exhale, tuck the tailbone round the spine. Now we're going to do a few in a circle. So you're going to start to rotate the spine around, kind of like your spine has become a jump rope. We'll go three in one direction. When you've done three in that direction, you'll reverse. Let the neck get involved there. So even rotating through the upper spine, cervical spine, neck. When you've done three in that direction, go ahead and come back to a neutral spine. Tuck the toes under and rise up into your downward facing dog. So you can send the hips up and back. Feel the stretch in your calves, the stretch in the hamstrings, the Achilles. Good, and then separate your feet as wide as your mat. Walk your hands back as you bend your knees, and we're gonna come down into a low yogic squat at the back of your space. So elbows will come to the insides of the knees, hands together at the heart center. If the heels won't come all the way down to the ground, you can always roll up a blanket or even stick your pillow underneath the heels. Know that over time, the heels will start to lower as you practice more and more. Now draw the thumbs into the center of the chest, lift the chest up high, take a big inhale through the nose. And then through the nose or the mouth, release. Good. Another one. And one more. From there, lower your hands down to the ground. Lift your hips up and turn the feet parallel to each other. You're gonna wrap the arms around the legs. You can also walk the feet closer here if that feels better. Bend the knees deeply, place the chest on the thighs, and then try to straighten the legs and keep the chest and thighs glued. Relax the weight of the head down, soften the neck. Good, and then re-bend the knees, loosen that tension. And one more time, straighten the legs. Feel the stretch of the back of your legs. Release the neck. Release the jaw. Good, and then release the tension. Come back down into your yogic squat, walking the feet out, turning the toes out, dropping the hips. This time, fingers stay on the floor. We're gonna lift the right hand up, opening the wingspan to the right. Bring the hands back to center, and then switch sides. Right hand to the outside of the right foot, left hand to the ceiling. Good, release both hands down. Come back into your tabletop position. This time, you're gonna place the hands at the top of the mat and roll forward into a cobra or up dog. 
so you can bring the hips down to the floor, lift the chest, inhale. And then as you exhale, start to lift up, keep the spine arched until your hips meet your heels, and then round the back. You're gonna keep the back round as you come forward, 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 and then start to drop the hips, articulate up through the spine until you meet that up dog or cobra pose. Keep the spine arched, start to sit back towards your heels. When the hips come to the heels, round the back. Round the spine as you roll forward, as you start to drop your hips, begin to articulate into the arch of the back. And one more time, keep the back arched as you send the hips to the heels. Keep looking up. When the hips meet the feet, round the back, chin to chest, roll forward. And this time all the way through, up dog, and down to a cobra pose. Good, now this should feel really nice for the shoulders and chest. You're gonna place your left hand out to the side and then roll onto your left side. So my right hand is planted in front of my chest just as a way to kickstand or prop myself up. But if you feel pretty balanced and you wanna go deeper into the stretch, reach the right arm up, maybe even clasp the hands behind you, but don't let this left hand move down. So keep it extended out of the shoulder. Keep reaching to touch the hands. Good, another inhale. And then release back to the belly. Change which cheek is on the floor. So now your right cheek comes down to the ground, right arm goes out to the side. We're gonna roll over to the left, I'm gonna watch my candle. <laughs> you can place your left foot behind you. That would be a terrible ending to this video. Not gonna happen. So left arm reaches back, like you're gonna grab the right hand. If it feels better to keep that left hand planted in front of you, you might use it as balance and support. Good, take a full deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, roll into the belly once again. And then just one time to strengthen the back muscles, to engage and turn on the back muscles. You're gonna interlace the hands behind you. Press your palms together. Draw, so palms really pressed together here. Draw the knuckles back towards the heels as you lift the chest. And then if it feels good to also lift the feet, fly the feet for five. Breathe deep, try to straighten the legs. Don't let the feet come wider than your hips. So either all the way together or hip distance. Good, and release all the way down. Hands under your shoulders. Sit back into your child's pose. So after strengthening the back, we'll stretch the back. Finding counterbalance is good in all of our postures that we do. So after having engaged the back muscles, it's good to lengthen the back muscles. Same with any muscle that we engage and then release. Push into the hands, rise up to your tabletop position. Step your left foot between the palms. Shift your hips forward. Very rarely in yoga do we do a half split with the hips on the heel, but we're gonna do it tonight. So you're gonna start to straighten your left leg, take your hips all the way back to your heel. Point the front toe, extend your arms forward. Fold as far forward as you can. So if you if you don't have as much flexibility in the back of the leg, you'll be up here. If you have pretty flexible hamstrings and calves, you can extend the hands past the feet, drop the forehead towards the shin and then re-bend that front knee. This time as you come forward and you drop the hips forward, we're gonna take the hands off the ground so you can reach them out to the sides, you can reach them up overhead, whatever feels good here, take a deep inhale. Good, and then one more time, straighten that front leg. This time keep the toes flexed towards the shin, sit back on your heel, drape the chest forward. Good, and then come back forward. From there, you're gonna plant the palms, tuck the right toes, lift the knee, step back to a plank, shift into down dog, press the heels down, 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 down. And then coming through a bear hold, start to shift forward, hover the knees for five, four, three, two, you got it, one, lower the knees, nice work. And then step your right foot forward between the palms, shift the hips forward. Really surrender the left thigh bone towards the ground so you're finding that not a forceful stretch, 
but a relaxed position of hips falling forward. And then as you straighten your right leg, this first time we point the toe. So go ahead and sit the hips on the heel, point the toes, feel the soleus, top muscle of the foot get a stretch, hamstrings of course get a stretch. <laughs> And then re-bend your right knee, shift the hips forward. This time, arms will raise any amount or any position that feels good. So arms reach maybe up to the side, maybe up overhead. Shifting hips forward. Make sure that your left hip doesn't go further back than the right. So both hips come back, they stay parallel to each other, and they come forward together. Yes. Nice, and then we'll flex the, left, the right toes this time as we sit back on that heel. Good, drop the weight of the head down. If you've had to sit a lot today, this is really, really great for re-energizing, rehabilitating any lack of hamstring attention that you've gotten. and then re-bend that knee. Plant the palms down firm, tuck your left toes. We'll shift back to a downward facing dog. This time from your down dog, you're gonna bend the knees, look between the thumbs and you can step or hop to a seat, center of your mat. And then we're gonna lower all the way down to the ground. So go ahead and lower down. Send the arms out to a T position. We're gonna cross the right knee over the left knee. So just like you're sitting in a chair with the legs crossed, and then scoot your hips to the right, lower the knees to the left. If it's okay for your neck to look over the right shoulder, you'll turn the face in that direction. It's a pretty deep rotation through the whole spine, so if it's too much, you can look up or you can look left. The deepest variation being looking to the right. Twists are great at night and they are also great in the morning because they stimulate the digestion. So for our elimination in the morning, it's really great to do twisting positions in the morning and at night. At night, they're good for decompressing the spine, especially. Good, and then bring the knees back up to center. Scoot your hips to the left, uncross and recross opposite way. And then you'll lower the knees to the right. And if it feels good to look over the left, you'll look over the left. If the knees don't make it all the way to the floor, this would be also a great place to use your pillow. You could slip it under that um, left knee if it's hovering maybe outside of the right thigh. Good, bring the knees back to center. Scoop the hips to the middle. Now this is a good one if you aren't all the way to the floor to use maybe even two pillows and slide the pillows underneath the backs of the thighs. We're gonna take the soles of the feet together, drop the knees open wide, and walk the heels closer towards the hips. Um, if that's too much to have the heels in close, you can widen that diamond shape by drawing heels down away from you. But if you can, bring them in closer, rest the hands down on the pelvis, and then just relax the weight of the hands heavy, relax the weight of the knees heavy. Good. Now with the hands there on the low abdomen, we're going to send breath all the way down to the low belly. So you'll feel the low abdomen rise under the hands. Take a full inhale down. Should feel like almost the way if you've witnessed a baby breathe, it should look like that and feel like that. And then slow exhale through the nose. Good. Do that again. So as you inhale, filling all the way down to the hands, feel the hands rise with the breath. If you get into a rhythm with that breathing way down into the low abdomen, it can even become kind of like a euphoric breath. Go ahead and exhale through the nose or through the mouth. Good. So even though it's a little bit energizing, it's also very calming and soothing. Great way to wind down at the end of the day and bring your natural energy back. Good. One more like it. So as you inhale, filling all the way down to the low abdomen. And 
in through the nose or the mouth. Don't let the breath rush out. Let it softly, slowly lead through nose or mouth. Beautiful. Now we're going to do the opposite of this position. Again, kind of as a counter pose. So you're going to take the hands to the outsides of the thighs, walk the feet out to the outer edges of your mat, and then drop the knees in. So now the knees touch. Feet are on the outsides of the mat. Place your hands on your belly once again. Continue that diaphragmatic breath. And then release the arms down by the sides. Heel toe the feet in just a little bit and then slide the legs out. Long across the mat, release the full weight of the heels down. Release the full weight of the shin bones so your calves just smush on the floor. Let the backs of the knees be spacious. Hamstrings are free. Low back is at ease. The tailbone feels like it's digging into the floor. You can place a pillow under the um, under the <laughs> hamstrings. <laughs> you can slide it all the way up to the butt and release the legs down. You could also bend the knees if you felt like there was too much pressure on your sacrum. And then we'll release for a few moments here in our corpse pose, Shavasana, Shavasana, <laughs> relaxing the full weight of the body down, surrendering to gravity. Closing the eyes, releasing any expression from the face. And we'll be here for about one full minute, so you don't have to feel rushed in this. You could always pause the video and continue to rest. But if you have um, only a minute, then we'll rest here for about 45 more seconds, letting the full weight of the body release, letting the breath be at ease. Absorbing the natural calm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Last couple of moments here, place a hand on the belly, a hand on the chest. Take a full inhale into the hands, feel the belly rise, feel the chest rise with that inhale. Take a slight pause at the top of the breath. And then through the nose, slow exhale. Feel the chest fall, feel the belly fall. And this is where if you have more time, you'll pause the video and continue to rest in this space or you'll have a friend pause it for you so you don't have to move. And if it's time for you to get up and get moving, you'll start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And then bend your elbows and rotate your wrists and ankles. And take a full body stretch by reaching your arms overhead. Inhale deeply through the nose. And as you exhale, roll onto one side. We're going to come all the way up to a seat. <laughs> so you can make your way up to a seated position. If you're using your pillow, you can slip it under your seat like a meditation cushion. Come into a cross-legged position and release the knees down. We'll take a moment here to close our practice together. So as you inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Take a full deep breath. And then as you exhale, we'll bring the hands down to the heart. Take a moment here at the end of your practice to honor yourself for showing up and for taking this time out for you, knowing that it's very valuable time that you give yourself. A lot of benefits come from that for the body, the mind, and the spirit. And take a moment to acknowledge that by showing up for yourself in this way, you also benefit the people around you. So naturally, <laughs> this practice, this time that you take for yourself will also benefit the people that you live with, the people that you work with, 
the people that you care for tend to. It was an honor to guide you through this practice. Thank you so much for showing up on the mat with me. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for our next day of this 12 days of Christmas yoga and fitness challenge. Namaste.